to another episode of Argos Anonymous. My name is Adam, and we're going to talk about an aggro deck today, Liam Sola Knights, to be specific, which is, in my opinion, a very fun deck to play. Uh, first of all, just as a favor to those of you who are not in any way interested in anything I have to say, which I respect, that's totally fine, there's the deck list, all right, enjoy that. Now, moving on for the rest of y'alls, here we go. Let's let's just talk about it. And um, you know, as always, if you enjoy these videos, I do have playlists on my channel where we break down new player stuff and old player stuff and collector stuff and deck lists and stuff like that. So check out the playlist. Feel free to like and subscribe if you want to like and subscribe for updated Arjun Saga content from here until the end of time. And let's just okay, let's get into it. So Liam is a great champion. Uh, Liam has the ability that whenever you crack an opponent's tower, you get to tutor your deck for a gear. You get to search for a gear and add it to your hand, which is great. But in addition to that, you can discard a gear from your hand and give one of your units plus 500. So we're going to use those to the full extent of the law with Liam. And then moving on, we've got for the spirit, Sola. Now, a lot of people are splashing Kite right now because Air has Sylphia, basically. I didn't do it in this. Just because this deck, to me, isn't about board control, um, this deck is about aggro. It's about killing your opponent by turn four, uh, or maybe turn five. And so for me, Sola accomplishes that. Um, there's a lot of different ways to skin this cat, though, and uh, there's a lot of different variants of this deck out there. So just do what's good for you. For me, it's Sola. Why do I like Sola? Here's why. If I win the dice roll... Um, and my opponent gets to go second, right? Um, or if my opponent wins and tells me I have to go second, either way, I could if I wanted to, and it depends on what deck you're playing against, I could engineer a scenario where I play second, like when the game first starts, so that during my opponent's turn, before I've taken any turns at all, I can Soul Burst, and then I can create a 2,000 power knight unit to guarantee that during my first turn, I can crack a tower. And that guarantees that I get to tutor for a gear, which guarantees that during my mulligan, I can like dump gear, for example, and know that I will always have a gear in my hand turn one, which I like to know. So I use Sola and then like a jerkophile, I just soul burst it right away and I make that unit and then I just start, I just start attacking right off the bat and get my opponent on the defensive, which they don't like. So moving on, what do we have for towers? Just the basic towers. That's it. Tower of Fire, Darkness, Water, Air, Light. Could I be fancier? Yeah, I'm sure I could. Uh, for this, you know, for my play style, I just like the basic towers. And that should be enough for you. So, the Knight package is robust in Liam Sola Knights, um, as would be expected, I suppose. So, we'll start with the new Knight, Citra Aspirant Rose Knight. Citra is a great one cost, 1000 power knight. Now we don't use her abilities to their fullest extent because we actually don't have the card Order of the Rose in this deck. It's not even in here. Um, maybe it would fit uh, somebody smarter than me figure out a way to make it optimal. For me though, I like Citra because her arrivability is if a unit you control was put into the discard zone this turn, then when Citra arrives, you can tutor your deck for a Rose Knight with a cost two or less and put it directly into play, which is crazy. Like let's say you you attack some turn and you hit the Fire Tower or the Tower of Embers and then they destroy some of your stuff that's left over and it goes to the discard. Boom, now you play a Citra, she tutors for something else and you've, you've repopulated your board really fast. So I like Citra. Also it's a, it's a one drop Knight which comes into play in a lot of other ways in this deck. The next Lobby, Lobby Knight, is Gallant Squire. Gallant Squire is a nice one cost, 1,000 power unit that lets me tutor, or sorry, lets the next gear that I play this turn cost one less to play. So usually, not always, usually the way you're playing Gallant Squire is you're going to then follow it up 
with a shard dagger and pound somebody for 1500 which is usually enough to break a tower um so you know you play this on turn two and right away you've got a shard dagger boom more quickness so gallant squire is great it's also a knight which fits the archetype next up we have blue rose knight so not a lot of people that i've seen anyway are playing blue rose knight um i like it in here for a couple of reasons it is a 500 power for one whoop to do but it does get plus 500 for each unit adjacent to it. And we have so many low cost units in here. It's usually really easy to fill your board and to make this into a native 1500. And if it's only a thousand power, you can always pump it with Liam to get your tower cracking 1500 available to you. So we have three of these, uh, these blue rose knight. It's also a rose knight, which is a target for Citra when she wants to bring something into play. Ideally though, Citra would would probably well i guess it depends on your your units uh your unit distribution as to what you would search for but the next one is a two cost 1000 power red rose knight another target for citra to tutor up this is a guardian whoop de doo this is an aggro deck so you're usually not turtling behind your guardians um why is this in here i guess because it's a it's a knight it's a rose knight and if you do equip it with a gear Units adjacent to the to this gain plus 500. So sometimes you'll have like a couple of 1,000 power tokens next to it. You throw a gear on this, and now they become tower cracking 1,500 power units, right? The other thing is if you if you actually end up using Guardian, which almost never comes up, but yeah, sure it could come up. If you use Guardian, you can add a gear from your discard zone back to your hand. Keep in mind with this deck, you're really trying to kill people by like turn four. Or turn five so you're usually not really worried about your own defense you're just worried about destroying your opponent as fast as possible moving on we've got the nova knight nova knight is a two cost 2500 power um, omega unit remember the way omega units work is you can't play them directly into play you have to play them on top of another unit fine so this one specific it has to be a knight unit now nova knight is a really really good card and we definitely have enough knight units in this deck to support it why is it a good card because omega units can attack the turn they come into play so you could for example you could play like a blue rose knight for one and then you can omega it the turn right immediately and then you can attack with it and then um, nova knight's ability is put a unit under this card into the discard in order to exhaust or recover target unit so you could ready itself back up and attack again or another unit we have in this deck is let's say we have a repper bloom so repper bloom every time it gets targeted it farts out two copies so you could like play a blue rose play a nova and then you could like, you know, attack with Repro Bloom or do whatever you want to do. Maybe you pump Repro Bloom with one of your, your Liam or something to fart out some copies. You attack with your Nova Knight. You dump whatever's under the Nova Knight to ready your Repro Bloom back up. When you target him for that, he farts out more copies. And you're just, it's just, um, it's good synergy for what this deck is trying to do. So that's your Nova Knight. And we have two of those. Then we have Yuki is a nice three cost knight. So Yuki is uh, is wonderful in this deck for a couple of reasons. The first is, yeah, sure. If if your opponent is actually coming after you quickly, then this is a great way to get more aggro because if you if your opponent destroys one of your towers, or actually more specifically, if one of your towers is destroyed by some means you can just put Yuki into play. So if your opponent's actually coming after you, this just adds to your aggro package with a nice target attack 2000 power knight which you can also play nova on if you want to etc etc but the other thing is you can uh you can use in this deck we have a couple of i guess we'll talk about it later we have a couple of reckless shard beasts this card allows you to destroy your own tower so if you have a yuki in your hand you can reckless shard beast and then give it quickness, destroy one of your own towers, attack, you know, drop a Yuki, right? It's just, it's a fun way to trigger it yourself, which is important because if you've got Yukis in your hand and you're playing against like um, a slow deck that's not even destroying your towers, then Yuki can just 
kind of sit there like a log. So this way you can proc your own Yuki in a very satisfying way. And because you're playing aggro, you're really not too worried about destroying your own towers because you're just trying to kill your opponent. Next night, we're gonna talk about the White Rose Knight. So now we're into the finishers, okay? White Rose Knight is a finisher in this deck. You only have one of them. The way it works is for every knight that you control, including this one, right? Choose up to three. You can search your deck for a gear and add it to your hand, fine. You The, the main ones you're using is you can equip a gear from your discard zone to this card. Most often, you're gonna equip a shard dagger to give it quickness. So it's basically a four cost with quickness, but you usually, not always, you usually have another knight out too. So you can also switch target knight unit to active. So you could, for example, let's say you already attacked with your Yuki to crack a tower. Now you play a white rose knight, you give it quickness with a shard dagger, you untap your Yuki, boom, boom, you've just cracked two more towers. Depending on what tower you hit, of course, if you hit the Tower of Air, it might all just go back into your hand. Fine. So, White Rose Knight. Next, we've got Ixander. Ixander is a great finisher in this deck because you have a lot of gear in your discard. By the time you've hit turn five or six, you've got four or five gear in your discard, and you're able to play Ixander because he costs one less to play for every gear in your discard. When Ixander hits the field, you can take two gear from your discard and put it on him. So usually what you're doing is you're at least giving him quickness with a shard dagger, right? So really it's a turn five or six destroyer, 4,000 power with quickness, and you can expel a gear equipped to him to expel target unit. So if they have a defender, if they have a guardian, you can like put two things on him, one that gives him quickness and one whatever, and then expel it to get rid of the guardian. Or if they have some other problematic unit, you can get rid of it with this. You can finish the game with destroyer. Um, it's a good card, it's a good card in this one. Next we've got Kara, the glorious Valkyrie. So you could probably sub this out for something else if you want, but let me just explain why I have it. So. Kara, if you're not playing against Light, is a great card because it costs less to play for each of your own destroyed towers, fine. Worst case scenario, you're playing at turn six, I guess. Um, when this is in play, neither player can play non-Light spells. So if, if your opponent's not playing Light, this shuts them down. And non-Light units come into play exhausted. So if your opponent's not playing Light, they'll be very afraid of this card. But it's a late game thing, so why is it in here? Because usually your opponent's like dead before this comes out. <laughs> I have this in here because in my experience, a lot of the time, if this is in my hand, I mean, yeah, if, if you make it to the late game, this can be a very helpful card, fine. But when this is in my hand and I crack my opponent's darkness tower, <laughs> if they see this card, they almost always pick it and dump it. This is the card they pick to dump. Instead of like a shard dagger or something else with quickness or something like that, they'll dump this card and then I can kill them with the Nova Knight or kill them with the White Rose Knight or something like that. So it's um they people like to discard it and if you if it does hit the table, it can be very helpful. If your opponent's playing light, then you just sideboard it out and put in something else. Next, let's go to a couple of um ancillary light units that are not knights. Two very important units are the, uh, it's V, Matron of Miracles. So V is a is a fantastic card. I'm trying to get it to come into focus here, but I mean, I'll put the art over there, but stupid camera, come on, man. Anyway, so what V does, V will allow you to expel gear from your discard in order to recover a unit. So the, the main utility here is you can recover your 002 mutation tokens by expelling zero, because tokens have a zero cost. Right? You can also recover your knight token that Sola generates uh, by expelling zero, which is crazy. But you also have just a lot of low cost units here and it's easy to expel like one gear. So you play your V, you, you attack with everything you've got and then you play your V and you start expelling units to recover everything and then just attack again and finish the game. That's kind of the idea. So we've got two Vs in there. I don't have three just because she costs three and this is a very like low cost aggro deck. So we have a Quorum Assassin as our last light unit. Essentially it maintains quickness. It's a four cost with quickness, but if you need some removal, you can, when it arrives, sacrifice a gear to destroy target unit. You could probably sideboard this out. 
Um, if you play the game and you find that you're just not having to destroy a unit, get rid of it and put in something else that you might need. For Argent Package, we've got, of course, the obligatory three bone scavenger. Uh, because it's a low cost, 1000 power tower destroying beater, Liam can pump it up to a 1500 right away, which can take out towers, or you can pump it up itself. And it's gonna interfere with your opponent's strategy by expelling units from their discard, which is very helpful in Arjun Saga. Of course, we have three Reprobloom. Every time Reprobloom's targeted, he farts out two copies of himself, which is crazy because you can start to ready those copies back up for nothing using V, Matron of Miracles, and you can target Reprobloom with Nova Knight, and you can target it with gear on your own, and you can target it with Liam. So you have a lot of ways to proc Reprobloom on your own and generate tokens and then overwhelm your opponent with that. Don't forget about Reckless Shard Beast. We mentioned him before. So I, I really like this card in this deck because he's a way to destroy your own tower, which not only gives you your own powerful tower effect, but it triggers Yuki on your own so that if you're playing against like a stall deck that's not attacking you, it doesn't matter. You can still proc Yuki and it has quickness, which is a nice game finisher. You can pump it up to a 1500 using Liam, so it can still destroy towers. I really, I like Reckless Shard Beast. Then our gear is pretty straightforward. We've got three of the uh, Shining Shard Dagger because it gives quickness, which is, this is how you're winning this game, right? Especially against, for example, air players that are, they think their Sylphia loop's gonna save them. They're like, oh, I'm gonna loop Sylphia every single turn. Nope, you, you better have something else up your sleeve because there's so much quickness in this deck that it doesn't matter if you don't have a unit. Uh, on the table when your turn starts because everything you have has quickness basically then we have three calibers because i couldn't find anything better to do basically so caliber is helpful in that you can use it uh, to attach to something fine and give it plus a thousand but really what it can do is you can protect something the, uh, why would you protect something i don't know maybe you'd protect your scavenger, if scavenger is essential, like if you're playing against Matail, for example, and you have to get rid of the Inquisitor, or if you're playing against uh, Hoena or something, I don't know. Except then she'll just wrath you, and it won't matter. Fine. But also when you use um, when you use Caliber, you get to draw another card, and that extra card draw is actually really helpful in this aggro deck in case you start to stall out and you just need more cards in your hand, Caliber can help you get there. Then I have the very important Golden Roseblade. This is not in here to make something unblockable. Like, you could, but it's almost never here for that reason. I mean, maybe it'll win you the game someday, but the main reason this is in here is because you can tutor for it early game with Liam, because you only have one. You tutor for it, and then when you use Liam, you just start discarding your Golden Roseblade, because every time your opponent plays a spell, you can add this back to your hand. So you're discarding it with Liam, and then bringing it back to your hand. When your opponent plays spell, discard hand, discard hand, and it just gives you a lot of ammo to use with Liam. Ketsu, similarly, it's a one cost, so you can, for example, trigger your Reprobloom for only one cost, fine. But really, it's just something you can discard with Liam and not care. And then every time your light units attack, it'll come out into play and sit on them again, fine, whoop de doo Maybe if someday there's a better... Um, um, gear to put in here will switch out Ketsu for that. And then I have Longinus because you can sacrifice it to deal 1500 uh, damage to something. It's just, it's a way to remove something pesky. Yeah, it gives something plus a thousand, but mostly it's just utility. We've got one in here, and if you need it, you can search for it with Liam, and then you'll, then you'll have it. For shards, we just have six basic shards and a Corona. I've got three Hallowed Crystal in here, whoop-de-doo. I've, I've basically never used them, but why not, you know? So pretty much Corona. Um, if you still have a spirit for some strange reason, I guess you could use it. Because we're soul bursting our spirit at the beginning, we almost never do, but I have it in here just in case you are playing a deck where you don't want a soul burst at the beginning, where you want to be able to untap to, to block and use your guardians and, and to have some more removal with Corona, fine, then you'll have it. And that's that's it. That's your Liam Sola, that's your Knights. Hope you enjoyed that, I certainly do. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you have any um, improvements, please provide them. If you have your own little version of this, put it in the comments, let's hear it, because we just I love seeing all the different variety that other people come up with. Hoken, of course, will probably change, maybe it'll change everything, it comes out in a month, but 
Between now and then, if you want to try aggro and you, you don't like dragons for whatever reason, even though dragons are awesome, try this and I think you'll find it very satisfying. That's all I've got. Enjoy that, guys. Enjoy this game. Uh, enjoy the fall. Argos out.